Hi, my name is Jeff Scaprata, and I played Matt Fox. Hey, I'm Holly Hirsch, and I played Annabelle Fox. How would you guys describe You've Got Mail? Okay, uh, how would I describe You've Got Mail? When I describe it now, uh, I tell them, and just to like set the time period, I tell them it's when AOL was cool, and when people had screen names and stuff like that. Um, for me, I guess the movie was about uh, Tom Hanks owning this mega bookstore, um, Meg Ryan with the mom and pop bookstore, kind of not knowing that they're talking to each other online, online dating, falling in love with each other, but not really knowing who they were talking to. It's kind of nowadays, like online dating, you don't really know who you're talking to now. So it's kind of like predicting the future is kind of cool. But uh, for me, in the movie, it was just a bunch of like fun and games. I didn't actually know I was filming a movie, to be honest, because I was so young. But, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, You've Got Mail is like this perfect capture of this really unique time in internet and romantic and New York history uh, when, you know, people were discovering that you could, you know, meet people online, spark a romance, and then in real life be mortal enemies. <laughs> and it was back when, yeah, it was back when... Amazon hadn't taken over yeah, the big bookstores exactly. yeah. yet, so yeah, it was the it was the little uh, artisanal bookshop and the big box bookstore yeah, coming. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Not yet with the with the even yeah, exactly. larger. Which a huge <laughs> overseer bookstores, yeah. yes. But for me, you've got mail is actually this beautiful portrait of New York City in all of its seasons, and it's like. I love that it came out during Christmas because for me, it, it still is like this really like warm, comforting Christmas high-gy kind of film. And, and, and I think because I was so young when I was in it, I don't watch it like I watch other things I've been in and go, oh, I don't want to watch it. Oh. I watch it as if I weren't a part of it. Like I watch it like, like any fan of You've Got Mail, like I just get all bundled up and <laughs> I love that movie. <laughs> love it. Do you remember finding out that you got the part? I do. Yeah, I remember finding out that I got that part. It was a really big deal. I was already a big fan of Meg Ryan, and oh, I was obsessed with Meg Ryan, actually. I wanted to be Meg Ryan when I grew up. And Tom Hanks was pretty well on my radar as well. So it was definitely, at that point in my life, the biggest, like biggest win, biggest success. I remember being at home and getting a phone call from my agent and screaming and running around the house. <laughs> and, and, and I think my mother was probably in tears. Um, for me, I don't physically remember being announced that I got the part, but I do remember um, this was my first speaking role on TV. So I was in a movie prior to this, but this was actually my first speaking role where I actually got to talk and have actual lines. And as a five-year-old, I guess that's kind of a big deal. Um, a lot of preparation going into like memorizing lines and knowing when to say what you had to say. Um, like I said, I don't remember the announcement, oh, you got the part or anything. Uh, so for me, it was a little bit different. Uh, yeah. And we were in that movie together. Yes, we were. were in the, <laughs> yes, we were in the movie. Yes, we were. <laughs> and uh, that was actually funny when they announced that I would be with Holly. And uh, we were with each other for another movie prior to this. Uh, it was One True one Thing. One True Thing, yes. But I wasn't speaking in that. And were you speaking in that? Yeah, yeah, a little right. bit. Yeah, yeah, and it was it was, it was was with um, Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep, yes. And, and we were, I think we were in a flashback or something. Uh -huh. Fighting over a toy in the backseat of a car <laughs> or something. That's, that's what I remember from it. But. So we were already old, old uh, <laughs> co-workers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and we got back together, semi-reunited back together in this movie. <laughs> uh, what are your memories of working with Tom and Meg? Tom Hanks was a total prankster. I remember when we were working this in a soundstage, <laughs> we were uh, you, you, working in the interior of the shop around the corner, which was Meg Ryan's shop, and when we exited the store, there was sort of yeah. like this fake um, uh, sidewalk, and he put like one of those fake dog poo things, yep. so they I kept remember. walking in. I remember. <laughs> yeah. I remember walking in in the morning into the hair and makeup trailer and him eating from a bowl of cereal and saying, um, always talk with your, well, always, oh gosh, he said, he was eating from a bowl of cereal and he said, always, always chew with your mouth full. And always talk with your mouth full. 
and I loved that very much. For me, um, so I worked, <laughs> my scenes were, a lot of them were with Tom Hanks, and uh, I remember one scene in particular, the carnival scene, and I, again, I didn't know I was actually filming just because of how friendly he was with me. Like, I was on his shoulders for basically the whole entire time. Even after shooting, I was, like, still hanging out on his shoulders, eating cotton candy, playing with the carnival games. Like I said, I didn't know we were shooting at all because it was just so much fun being with him and uh, just running around, especially that scene. Um, I also remember the uh, bookstore scene where, as we're exiting, kind of similar to you, but uh, as we're exiting, he closes the door, and there's a couple outtakes where he's, uh, he mistakenly closes like the balloon in the door, he closes the fish on the door. And I just remember just after filming, he was also a very down-to-earth guy, like you said. You didn't really know he was, oh, Tom Hanks. He was very oh, relatable. Oh, a super cute story. His son was in one of the scenes, and he and his wife, Rita Wilson, were on set, and they were total stage parents. It was amazing. <laughs> and, and Jeffrey and I were familiar with stage oh, yeah. parents because oh, yeah. Yeah. we both have them. Um, but Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson were there, like, with their cameras, super excited for their son to be getting his camera debut. And it was the cutest thing. And these are two people who are very well-seasoned yeah. performers. You exactly. know, they're not starstruck by any of the cameras, but they sure work for their kid. And that was, it was sort of cool for me to see these big, famous movie stars acting just like my parents. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, when's the last time you guys saw each other? At the premiere? Yeah, at the premiere. You've yeah. got mail. Which That's so long ago. Very, What's very up, long. How are you doing? <laughs> uh, yeah, very long time ago. He was ago. at the Natural History Museum. Yeah, I, I have pictures. I have pictures and I have, <laughs> I have, I have the tickets. I have the premiere tickets wow. that we held on to. Yeah. And there's a picture with me, you, and Meg Ryan in a picture together. Oh, wow. When yep. we were very young. I have that picture, I Do you? think. You might, <laughs> yeah, you I think might. it's in my mom's closet. That's on exactly her wall where it was for mine. It was in my mom's. <laughs> and we took it, I took it down just for this. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I had to dust it off a little bit. But yeah, 20, about 20 years ago. It's so good to see you. It is very nice to see you. What do you guys remember about the premiere? Well, I remember the party was under the big whale. <laughs> These are things that 10-year-olds remember, remember. I don't remember any of those. <laughs> I remember getting dressed up in really fancy clothes. Mm -hmm. um, I remember... I remember... Um, I remember knowing that it was really important to walk down a red carpet. And that I was walking down a red carpet, and there were lots of people taking pictures, and they shout at your name. You shout your name, and you're just this little ten-year-old, and they're going, "Holly over here! Holly over here! Holly over here!" And and it's a little bit overwhelming. And then you probably, you know, go home back to your normal bed at night, and then you go to school the next day, and you know, kids are just like, "Oh my gosh, your backpack's exactly. so big, it's stupid, get out of my way, whatever." And you're just a normal kid again, and and it's just like that was sort of a weird little. Uh, Pocket reality. <laughs> same, uh, pretty much the same for me. I, I mean, I remember my mom took me. Uh, it's funny because my dad used to take me on all my auditions, but my mom took me to the premiere. Uh, I don't know how that ended up working, but uh, kind of the same same thing for you. You know, I, I went to my premiere. I took my pictures. It was all fun. And then the next day, like I said, you go back to kindergarten, and uh, it's just you back in kindergarten, and like. A lot of my friends, a lot of my close friends knew that I did this, but not a lot of people knew that I was on TV or, like, acted or anything. So it was kind of just like, like you said, it was like a nice dose of what it's like to be on TV. And then you go back to just reality where you're just a normal five-year-old kid. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, that's how it was for me. What were your most memorable scenes that you shot? For me, the most memorable scene that I shot is not in the movie. Because the final director's cut of the film was three hours long. Can you imagine wow. a three-hour, you've got mail? That would be nuts. Anyway, the scene was, it was shot in this incredible Vietnamese restaurant, which doesn't exist anymore. And I just, like, can remember, remember vividly this bowl of pho that we had to eat all day long during that scene. That was so it. good. I think I remember it as well. <laughs> and it's the scene where I'm sobbing at Tom, at, at Tom Hanks because because he put Meg Ryan's store out of business. And, and I'm just like, I remember, you know, having to like cry all day long. And I'm, I guess I probably stayed nice and hydrated with that pho broth. Um, and I'm just like crying, you killed the story, black lady! <laughs> so my big, my big dramatic uh, scene was cut, but oh. I still remember the tears in the pho. And it's vivid. <laughs> Uh, for me, my most memorable scene, um, I'm going to have to give it to my iconic three-letter FOX. Uh, a lot of people, when I tell them that I'm in the movie, that's all they ask me to do, even now, 20 years later. Um, you know, they give me the good old FOX, and that's what I'm, I guess, known as now through my friends and family, and I'm always the Fox kid or whatever it is. Uh, but yeah, for me, that was my most memorable moment, I guess.
That was actually my next question I was going to ask. Uh -oh. You could say FO. <laughs> sure. <laughs> exactly. Like, of course. Uh-huh. And of he course. can spell fox. Yeah. So uh, I guess we'll do it one time <laughs> for 20 years later. So uh, F-O-X. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I guess I can't escape it, I guess. I don't know. It's just always there. But it's fine. I, I enjoy it. Um, yeah. And can you, go, can you give us a high New Jersey? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, okay, oh wait, yeah. but hold on. Before we do that, I totally took August to Riverside Park. I and have a son. Do. He's four years old. And we got to have this beautiful trip in New York to come to come do this really fun interview. And I took him to Riverside Park. Yeah. And we did it. And we went, hello, hello New Jersey. Jersey! <laughs> I remember being so small and thinking that everybody could hear me if I put my hand over my mouth. And uh, yeah, but that's actually another memorable. See, I, I keep these are good ones. I keep forgetting, but every time you remind me, yeah, I forgot all about these. Um, what are your favorite lines in the movie? Um, that caviar is a garnish. <laughs> when Meg Ryan is upset at Tom Hanks for just moving that spoon around and getting <laughs> that. One of my favorite um, lines is actually one that you say um, when we're in the bookstore and they're talking, they're like slightly mentioning about Fox Books and then she goes and opens her mouth and says, oh, Fox Books, my daddy. And goes, oh, yeah, yeah, let's keep going. He quiets her up just so he doesn't get the cat out the bag. Uh, that's, I, think, I think it's one of the funny lines because I, I was only around for the scenes that I was in um, and I remember that one and uh, for me that's a funny one, I think. And of course, you know, you got the FOX, of course, always the classic. But uh, yeah. Do you remember filming the scene where you sang Tomorrow from Annie? Okay, so I'll have to I'll have to dish about the details about the scene where I sing Tomorrow from Annie. Back in the day, I was in New York City and I was a little a child actress and I used to get every week professional singing classes from the big guy, Bob Marks. He trained all the kids on Broadway. In fact, I was almost, almost that year, I was almost co-set on Broadway. It didn't quite happen for me, but then I got, I got You Got Mail, yeah. which was amazing. Yeah. So I had been training, like, since I was five years old, for five years, and all day long during this Christmas scene, I had been belting out tomorrow. And um, for my last take during my close-up, Nora Ephron asked me to, she said, just for fun, just for fun, do this one like off key and like out of out of rhythm, like sing it like a bad kid, like someone who doesn't know how to sing. Gosh. I was like, oh my gosh, that'd be so fun. So I did it, and um, and that was the one they used. <laughs> and I remember being at the premiere and people going, oh Holly, you're such a good singer. And it's just like, thank I can do you. better than that. I can do better than that. But thank, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so, all my life, all my life, I still have that little ten-year-old in me that when people go, I love that song, are you singing? I'm like, um, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> one, of my, one of my really good friends, Laurie, she always jokes about it. She goes, there'll be sun. <laughs> when you're stuck with a day that's gray and lonely. <laughs> I just stick out my chin and grin. <laughs> Uh, lucky for me, I didn't have to do any singing parts in the movie, because if so, it would probably uh, not end up too well. Yeah. I'm grateful that I didn't have to sing in the movie. There'll be sun. <laughs> um, when Tom Hanks says, we're an American family, do you think that that line was kind of ahead of its time and the definition of family has kind of evolved to be more inclusive now? I think a lot of things socially have evolved since this movie. Oh, yeah. when this is really kind of fascinating. Oh, yeah. And yeah, he talks about how how Matt is his father's son, so he's his brother, and Annabelle is his grandfather's daughter, so I'm his aunt, and we are an American mm -hmm. family. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I think he was right on. Like, that's, that's a, um, it was happening and becoming more and more accepted then. In, in, in the movie, it was sort of, it was a scenario of, of, um, of class of of older men yeah. marrying yeah. younger, younger women, women yeah. in it. Ahead but, of its time. But 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 since then, I think it's even outside of that that class situation. It's it's people are um, there's all types of different shapes of families, and not 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 just two parents. Sometimes three, yeah. sometimes four, yeah. sometimes eight. And even still to this day, when I describe my character and my relation uh, to Tom Hanks in the movie, I'm like, yeah, I was just his brother. And like, how does that even make any sense? I'm like, I don't know. There's something crazy with the dad and remarrying and the grandpa remarrying. But yeah, so that's what I mean. Yeah. I always quote me. that line. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you keep in touch with anyone else from the cast? 
Unfortunately, uh, I do not keep in touch with anybody <laughs> else from the cast. I wish I could. I wish I did. Um, if you're watching, you can keep in touch with me if you want. <laughs> yeah, uh, call us. Call us if you need us. <laughs> when you're a kid on set, I mean, there's a sort of different. Yeah. Um, you know, it's people take care of you, but yeah. but uh, you're you're on set, you're filming, and then any moment that you're not, they have you with your with your on-set tutor. Mm -hmm. So there's not a lot of time for socializing yeah. as a kid yeah. on set. Yeah. Even in kindergarten, you get a tutor. You get a tutor. Yeah. <laughs> do you get recognized from the movie now? Yes, I do. <laughs> for me, do I get recognized from the movie now? Um, not so much unless I hint at it. And then they'll say, oh my goodness, that's you? Because they don't really recognize me. Um, if I give them an FOX, or, uh, yeah, sometimes they'll recognize me. Yeah, guys' guys' faces change yeah, quite a I lot. And I had, keep in mind, I had a mustache, uh, the drawn-on mustache for most of the um, show. So, oh, uh, yeah. yeah. People won't, maybe don't recognize me from the disguise. You just do that. I yeah. remember I had, for that scene, I had the cat whiskers. Yes, cat whiskers. If I go around cat whiskers. Maybe they'll recognize you better. I don't know. They'll recognize me a yeah. lot. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe <laughs> it'll work. <laughs> What's the last time you both watched it? Last Christmas, for me. Last time, I, yeah, I like to watch You've Got Me All During Christmas. So. I'm trying to think. The last time I watched it was recently when I was contacted about this interview to <laughs> get a little refresher. <laughs> but uh, and that was, I think, back in, like, August. So, yeah, around August for me. Uh, watching it as an adult versus a kid, what jumps out at you now about the movie? <laughs> I don't know. I don't <laughs> That's know. a hard one. I feel like one thing that that I was uh, I was thinking about recently about about you've got mail and something that would be very different nowadays is the um, is that you have a female who owns a small bookshop and you have a male mm -hmm. who owns this mega bookstore company and her business goes out and they still fall in love and yeah that could still happen but I feel like maybe the story would be a little be told a little bit differently now and it yeah. would be like there should be a, a sequel where the artisanal bookshop where the shop around the corner comes back in business and actually puts the big store to the test because people are more conscious buyers maybe and you know and they're, and they're supporting her store over the the, the larger picture. company yeah. <laughs> who knows i don't know <laughs> yeah do you remember your own AOL screenings oh yeah um, I had to, well, my first one was BSB Jewel. Nice. That was my first AOL screen name. That was Backstreet Boys Jewel. Nice. And my and then my second AOL screen name was Halion Visitor. Nice, Halion yeah. Visitor. Um, so I still use my AOL screen name. Um, wow. Jscappy4 at AOL.com, nice. made by my mom. Yeah. And I still have it. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. And I use it for all the spam emails. So I send, all, I sign up with all my things through Jscappy4 at AOL.com. Yeah, AOL, yeah. AOL email addresses yeah. have become spam emails. <laughs> So sorry, AOL. Yeah. <laughs> what are some of the ways the movie would be different now? Yeah, now oh, it would yeah. be, you've got a match. Yeah, or exactly, you've, you've, exactly. You've, you've got a swiped. local match. Exactly, you've been swiped right. <laughs> you have a local match 10 yards within, 10 miles within. Yeah, definitely different. Uh, but similar. Kind of, yeah. What I love about You've Got Mail, it was, was that sound, you've got mail, you know, sort of, elicited this what opioid response yeah. in the brain of somebody wanting to talk to you yeah of someone wanting to talk to you and we we still devices and technology and apps totally depend on that moment where you have a notification you have a little red you yeah. know little notification icon one two three yeah yeah, yeah. and and we still uh, you know like these weird creatures <laughs> that we've become these yeah. technological creatures we just like we we you know something turns on in our brain it's just like <gasps> there's connection Someone has noticed me, and and I love how you've got mail is the beginning um, uh, uh, of that story of that electronic zing in our head that that somebody out there in the ether, in the real world, and in the ether is thinking about me. Uh, yes. <laughs> I think also uh, before now, now everything's very instantaneous. Uh, you can get a bunch of notifications throughout the day. I mean, back then, I mean, for the movie, you know, they were sending their emails, their dating emails at nighttime. So it's kind of like once every day, you kind of had to like put everything you want to say in one email and then send it. And then they read it the next morning. They think about what they're going to say back to you for the whole entire day. Maybe through lunch, they're thinking about, oh, what should I say? What should I say? They finally type it at night. You get it the next day. Uh, nowadays, you can just send, you know, LOL, smiley face, blah, 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 all that other nonsense now. But I think back then, I guess it kind of had a more 
meaningful impact. Remember, I guess, remember logging you know. on to uh, to AOL. Of course. <laughs> yeah. You tell someone to get off the phone. Mom, get off the phone. I'm going on the internet. <laughs> and you had a sound when you logged in, whatever it may be, uh, like, "Hey, what's up? I'm in." And then when you logged out, you had a logout sound, and it would be whatever the cool oh, sound was had, back oh, then. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you remember Buddy um, Icon characters? Yeah, of course. I had the baby turtle one. Or a smarter child, when you were bored, you would talk to a robot, and they would respond to you <laughs> automatically. <laughs> These are really some outdated things, but yeah, you used to talk to Smarter Child, you have your friends list, have your away message set, uh, your profile would have all your friends' initials in it in capital letters, like alternating capital, lowercase letters, because it was cool to type like that back then. You know what I'm realizing, right, oh yeah, yeah the alternating capital, lowercase yeah. letters, that was big. I'm realizing that You've Got Mail, the movie, took place before even instant messaging yeah. on, a, on yeah. AOL mm -hmm. existed. You were sending actual emails in an actual inbox, emails. not like short, quick messages on AIM or whatever. So formal now. Yeah, exactly. And she has to wait in the beginning. She has to wait for the boyfriend to leave to run to her computer yeah. and you know read the email. Like, exactly. Uh -huh. it seems more ceremonious. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It yeah. 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 More, she uh, had to wait for him to leave to check her email, and now you can just kind of look down, <laughs> and down at your phone. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. Have around. your privacy screen go. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, do you guys get nostalgic going to bookstores now? <laughs> oh yeah, I get a little nostalgic going into bookstores for sure. Yeah, I do. I do, because I remember as a kid going into um, like a Borders or Barnes and Noble and spending a whole Sunday there with my family, you know, and 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 getting a big pile of books and taking it over to the cafe and um, or hanging out in the in the kids section all day long, and that was sort of like a, a sort of a Sunday with my family. And now, yeah, we have lost a little bit of that romance. Mm -hmm. Now you know you go on and you yep. click once and you get a good deal on a book. Uh -huh. You add it to your digital cart. You never even have to leave. It's sent <laughs> to your house. You get it in a little yellow envelope and it bubble wraps to your house. You kind of like eliminate the bookstore step. Um, Though I have to say, I, I work I work hard at supporting some local good. bookstores where I live and and I love to. Uh, there's one that's a uh, called Firestorm. That's a co-op that I really that I've been falling in love with and getting books for my kid and my family there and it's a really tiny kind of like shop around the corner size bookstore and it's neat that little little shops like that are are I hope around the country gaining again as people you know make the conscious effort mm -hmm. to go into a store and mm -hmm. support a local business mm -hmm. did you think that the movie would be so loved 20 years later I did not think about 20 years later when I was 10 years old, but it is amazing in hindsight to see how well loved this movie yeah. is. Same thing for me. Uh, I wasn't really thinking ahead, but uh, I guess looking back now, uh, I am glad that it's still a staple in, like you said, around Christmas time, they start playing it, um, around the fall time, they start playing it. Um, and I'm glad that I got to be a part of a movie like this um, at such a young age, too, yeah. which is cool. How did uh, having been a child star shape who you are now? This might sound strange, but I think it definitely helped with my memory skills. Um, and it helped me do, I think, well academically, if that makes any sense. Um, being a five-year-old, having to memorize lines, having to memorize when to say, what to say, how to say, um, and doing that at five years old, um, I actually think it did help me develop cognitively um, as far as my vocabulary and how to say things, when to say things. Um, for me, that's what I thought. Being a child actor, I feel like two main things have really stuck with me that have been really valuable. You think about child actors, wow, and all the success. Really, most of it is not success. Most of it, most of it, most of it is is rejection, oh, yeah. rejection, rejection. You go on hundreds of auditions to book one or two of them. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, like I, I said earlier, the same year that I booked You've Got Mail, I almost got, I was a final, uh, final um, contestant uh, for um, uh, Cosette in Les Mis on Broadway, and I didn't get it, and that was the biggest rejection mm -hmm. of my life. I was so dramatic, and it was so, it was just the first time I ever, rejection ever sank in for me as a human, and, um, uh, and, then, I, and then I acted for a good 15 years afterwards uh, every day. You know, yeah. rejection after rejection after rejection. You just move on, and you get um, you get really good at that. It's it's a good it's a good skill. But the mm -hmm. other thing that I really loved about being a child actor that stayed with me is is um, working on set with a with a with a crew with 
with limited resources, even big budget films have limited time, um, you really understand a sense of teamwork and working with people to make this miracle happen. It really mm -hmm. is a miracle when movies get made. There are mm -hmm. so many moving parts, there's so many things that can fall apart, and it's very expensive. And um, what keeps it all together is a sense of camaraderie, a sense of teamwork, and a sense of really understanding who does what yeah. and letting that blossom and letting that happen. Well said. <laughs> <laughs> Very well said. <laughs> and tell us what you're up to these days. Well, I'll go first. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, what I'm up to these days, I'm pursuing a teaching degree uh, for science education, so high school science education. Um, and I'm almost done with my master's degree, so maybe you'll see me in high school near you. Who knows? That is so cool. Yeah. Science is yes. very, very, very important, mm -hmm. and people need really awesome science teachers I'm glad you like agree. You. I'm glad there's people out there like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah, for real. Uh -huh. um, I, uh, I live in Asheville, North Carolina, with my husband and my four-year-old, and right now my um, eight-month um, fetus. <laughs> um, and we, uh, we own and operate a donut shop called Whole Donuts, where we make donuts to order in an open kitchen. And so you order a donut, you wait a few minutes, you watch it all happen by hand, and then you get a piping hot, crispy, on the outside, fluffy on the inside donut. Thanks for letting me do the plug. <laughs> <In> the plug. <laughs> <laughs> it's my plug. There you go. It's a really, really fun place. And it actually, in many ways, reminds me of the charm of the shop around the corner. It, it, I've, I've thought that many times about the donut shop that I work in. and I, I mean, I do remember being um, 10 years old, looking at Meg Ryan during those scenes and watching her, <laughs> watching her talk about books and talk about, as her character, and talk about how much she loves her job. And I, I've thought this several times in my own job, like how, how that sort of golden light that I saw behind her, <laughs> and that that, um, that 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 there's something I don't know, I don't know, like a little spark, a little inspired by that that fictional moment in a movie that I got to be a part of. It's still it's sort of still with me in that way. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, wow! Yeah, I had this forever. Yeah, I don't know where I it is now. Have. Yeah, see, oh, these are yours. There's the one one three and the one one one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't remember who sat right here. Though. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this is the original ticket that my mom kept uh, in her closet. I have no idea where she kept this, but it's here. And premier uh, ticket. Yeah, premier ticket from let's see when. Does it say the date? It just says yeah. December tenth, Thursday, December tenth. Seven thirty p.m. Dang. That is. This was. Wow. Oop. There it goes. Mm -hmm. I'm treated very is well. That one. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Just like the past, floating away. I still have it today. In the <laughs> okay. um, let's talk about this one. Sure, mm -hmm. of course. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is a picture of myself and Tom Hanks. This is actually when I got his autograph. Um, we were in the bathroom. And I remember going up to him after and just tapping on the shoulder, hey, can I get your autograph? Oh, and yeah. Wow, after you he washed are in his the hands, yeah, after he washed his hands, uh, he came and gave me his autograph. That so. looks like a golden urinal yeah. behind them. I'm not sure if it is, but I'm going to think that it is and pretend like uh -huh. it is. But it'd be really weird for the urinal to be underneath the hand. Yeah. Uh, the dryer. Dryer. Exactly. You were in the loo. Yes, ma'am. That's where, that's where I got like, his Tom autograph. Tom Hanks, take this picture exactly. with it, me. <laughs> didn't even hesitate. I'm going to wash my hands first, okay? And then he signed it. That is so cool. Mm -hmm. I really like that. You I were guess. so cute. I guess, yeah. I guess. You, were, you were six I was uh, like, yeah, I was, I was about six, yeah. Wow. And we have the next one. Uh, and this is, a, this is a duel. This is you and me. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Uh -huh. Wow. This is cool. Um, this is at the premiere yep. at the at the uh, party at the National History Museum, mm -hmm. and um, getting cool pictures with Greg Kinnear, Meg Ryan. Um, wow. I don't really remember any of this one, but uh, I guess there's oh, little proof. You know what I remember? This is funny. I remember um, looking in the mirror before before this premiere and trying to do a smile that was like, um, that was like, um, I was trying to do a smile, oh my gosh, I'm so bad with names, um, Jennifer Love Hewitt. I was trying to look like Jennifer Love Hewitt, and this was my best Jennifer good job. Love Hewitt smile. Huh. That was the smile that I was going to do all night. 
I, I guess I was working that. on my over the shoulder smirk. I guess that's what I was doing. <laughs> so, I didn't really practice. Maybe I should have practiced looking back on it. That's awesome. Yes, wow. this is a good one too. She did have a very distinctive kind of like. <laughs> <laughs> so adorable uh it's funny because i was joking before this uh, my friend told me to wear that exact same outfit coming here to the uh mm. <laughs> to this interview and uh, i still don't own any of that anymore but i what if i did i promise and there's me standing in front with my premiere ticket thinking i'm nice and famous uh <laughs> my mom made me do this so yeah and uh <laughs> there it is now in digital history and, uh, i'll never forget i definitely will never forget you were a very sweet little boy. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what I've been told. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> awesome. Well, there it is, the infamous. <laughs> wow! Yeah. You so hold that up. This is my autograph that I got from Tom Hanks. And me being the kid that I was, I pre-signed one for him. Mm but did it on the same piece of paper, so didn't realize that like I couldn't give it to him so that he gave me this one. So I kept my autograph to him, and then I kept his autograph to me. So yeah, that's that. And that's my kindergarten handwriting. I don't even know what it says. Uh, Tom Hanks. Meg. Yeah, and maybe Meg. Meg and Meg Ryan. I don't know what I was writing. And it's in crayon, green and red crayon. But yeah, and this is, this is definitely a keeper. We have this actually in my, my mom's room. So yeah, love this one. I was so starstruck by Meg Ryan, and she was... Um, just incredibly focused actress, and I remember watching her perform a scene and saying the lines each time like she had never said them yeah. before in her entire life and being in so much awe of her. And and she had a lot of focus in between takes, and yeah. I, I didn't, you know, want to really, like, start up too much conversation with her, and I, you know, wanted to be respectful and give her that space, but I remember um, humming the, um, the song that was in the... Uh, movie that was uh, having previews on TV all the time at the time, and that was the movie that she was in with um, Nicolas Cage, uh, City of Angels. And it was that, I think it was an Alanis Morissette song that was in, in <laughs> during the trailer. <laughs> and I was just like constantly humming it near her, hoping that she would Try notice. Try to get her attention. That <laughs> <laughs> but I pay attention to you. I pay attention to you. I know what you've been up to. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you'll, maybe you'll talk to me. She was really nice. <laughs> what do you remember about uh, Nora Ephron? Nora Ephron was, like, she was, like, incredibly, um, she was very nurturing and yeah. um, was passionate about child performers, yes. too. Yep. Um, and she was passionate about, I remember, just, like, letting us um, be kids. Yeah and sort of respecting our professionality, but at the same time letting us be kids. There was a lot of off-the-cuff, yeah. like a lot of just sort of leaving the camera on, mm -hmm. and um, uh, she loved real moments, and um, she was just, she was really, really sweet. I remember that uh, while I was working on You've Got Mail, I was being flown back and forth from Los Angeles to L.A. because I was working on a pilot um, at the very same time, and so there were a couple of red eye flights that I had to do, and they had a nice budget. You've got mailman, and they they put me up at like the Four Seasons or something to sleep for just a couple hours with wow. my dad after a red eye flight. And I know that was that was Nora Ephron's insistence, and um, she took care of us, and that was really cool. And I remember her uh, talking about being an actress to me, and about being an actress in television, being an actress in theater, being an actress in film, and what she thought were the sort of different um, benefits of each one. And, and she just was, she was really, uh, she, she really cared about me as a professional and, and my career. And I remember being felt, I felt very honored to have this director, this female director who, mm -hmm. who like, maybe I could be like someday, you know, really care about, my future. It was neat. 